Okay, this model was fun to make, but it is really totally useless for us to build something from. So, what we're going to do is build a traditional half model. I'm going to use this piece of red cedar. And I've got the basic elements of this boat cut out. I've got a profile. I've got the shear. And I've got the bottom. So I'm going to use a little spray adhesive. We're going to cut this away. There we go. Now that's all I'm going to do for now. Next, we're going to go to the bandsaw. Next I want to carefully lay my plan view on here. And I'm lining up the frames on this view with the frames on this view. We're going to do the same thing on the bottom. There's a little bit of formation going on here, but that's fine. I'm not going to worry about that. go. And now it's back to the bandsaw. sign work is done so now we just need to finish shaping it and we just need to take these sides and we need to bevel them off to match the bottom holding it's going to be a challenge from here on in so what I do is I take a simple cleat like this I screw it onto the side of the model and then I can hold this in my vise
So there we are. We've got a very uh, basic, what we call half hull model. And I've got no details on it yet, it's just the, the bare hull form. And we can compare it to the paper model we did before. A couple items that are interesting to note. One of them is that if we look at the model in profile, the cardboard one has got a lot more sh what we call sheer to it and rocker, which means shape this way. So we, we would say it's more jaunty looking. And, and if I were building a boat for a river, for instance, I'd probably build this. This is, this is a great little boat to deal with rougher water. Um, if you had a, um, a very choppy shoreline that you needed to get this boat through, that would be a good choice. However, this boat is going to be a lot faster for its given waterline length because it's just a slightly flatter shape to it. A little more elegant, I would say. And so while this model was amusing to produce it, uh, in terms of actually building a boat from it, it's kind of useless. However, this one we can do quite a bit with. And um, I could use it to describe uh, plank lines on it. If I was trying to figure out how many planks per side I wanted or how wide they wanted to be, I can use it to do a plank expansion and I'll do that next. And I could just use it as a good, as a nice hanging on the wall model. So I could peel off the uh, paper we put on there or we could leave it on and I could add the rub rail and the stem and a little crown to the transom and things like that. I could even add some little orlock pads and of course a skeg, which is missing from this model. So if we compare these two models side by side, the solid wood model comes out approximately at this scale, about three eighths of an inch longer than the paper model. And the reason for that is because when we built the paper model, we took this image of the boat in profile and we wrapped that length around the image of the boat in what we call plan view. And in doing that, we actually shortened the boat. The, the length of the side shortened. And that's why if you look at this model, you can see how the bottom projects past the sides. Now we've done the same thing with the bottom panel. However, there wasn't nearly as much shape being created or being stolen in wrapping that bottom panel around the curve of the sides. The, um, if you look at that shape there, there's, there's not a lot of difference between a straight line and the bottom of that boat. There's certainly some, but not enough to foreshorten it in any appreciable way. And likewise, that's the reason I was able to use these printouts to do the top and bottom panels. It's, um, while there is some foreshortening going on, it is compensated for by the fact that we, most, that we cut our block to length based on the profile view. So just a couple of details to finish up. I think I'm going to add a skeg to the bottom and I'm gonna put my little stem head on there and I'm gonna put a rub rail on there. So let's do with that stuff. So I'm gonna cut away the paper where those things exist. I'm gonna use this 2P10 adhesive. Okay, let's do the skeg now. I'm just gonna lay that flat and slide that up into place. I'm over just a hair, I'll have to clean that up with a block thing. Okay, now for the gunnels. So when you're doing gunnels on a model, sometimes I've used a little piece of um, eighth inch dowel for the gunnels. In this case, I've got a bit of mahogany. And to make it look really good, a set of gunnels ought to be tapered a little bit. So I've taken my block plane and just tapered out this piece of stock in both directions, in both the height and thickness towards the ends, but it's still a little bit fatter in the center. here first. Just trying to get it started. Okay, 
now I'm gonna look around. It's got a twist as it goes on, so that can be a little bit tricky. That's looking pretty good. And then I think maybe I'll even add a little transom extension because that might look nice just to take it up that, to that next level. Here's one more trick. The half model can be a little deceiving because there's only half of it and it'll always look like a narrower boat than it actually is. So if you take a mirror and put that alongside, you can get a much more accurate representation of what the real boat looks like. These models are fast to do. They're quite fun. I took a little bit more time to do it for the sake of making this video than I might all on my own. but. I've all, I'm always very satisfied with them when I'm done, and I've never regretted doing one in um, before building an actual boat.